Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 19 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future videos. I've been a little slower than usual in publishing those episodes because I'm currently writing a book on Amazon SageMaker and that's taking a lot of my time. So we'll talk about the book in another episode. For now, uh, let's talk about AWS News. I wanna show you some cool features on Amazon Polly, personalized recognition, and SageMaker. So let's get started. As usual, let's start with the high level services. And the first one I'd like to discuss today is Amazon Polly, our text to speech service. So as you probably remember, Polly has uh, two different engines for voice generation. The first one is the standard engine and the newer one is called the neural engine. And uh, we use it for a neural text to speech, NTTS. And uh, the difference is that NTTS actually generates a waveform using a deep learning network. So it sounds just more natural, more lifelike, and we can apply styles like the uh, newscaster style uh, that I probably demonstrated a while ago. So the news this week is there's a new voice for uh, the neural engine and it's a US English voice uh, called Kevin. So let's listen to Kevin. So you just go to the Poly console and uh, type some text. Make sure you select the neural engine, um, Kevin's voice, and we can just generate it and listen to it in real time. Hello, my name is Kevin. I watch silly YouTube videos and eat junk food all day long instead of reading books or playing football with my friends. I hate school and I never listen to what my parents say. I have a really bright future, I think. I think you do, Kevin, keep, uh, keep doing that. So there you go, super simple to use. Uh, here I use plain text and you can also use SSML, a markup language that lets you customize uh, the way the, that sound is generated, apply the newscaster style and uh, do all kinds of funny things. So just one more member in the Poly family. Now let's move on to recognition. And uh, this is a very, very cool net launch on a recognition video. So, um, you know, it's fair to say so far, recognition has really focused on uh, understanding the content in video. And um, with this launch, recognition actually moves on to um, helping you with the structure of, uh, of video files. So let me show you a couple of examples from this really nice blog post, which of course I will uh, reference in the description. So one thing recognition video can now do is detect black frames. So if you have uh, uh, transitions, uh, you know, uh, starting credits, opening credits, or, or if you just want to check, there, is, there isn't a black frame just in the middle of your video. Um, this, is, um, this is pretty cool. So it's, it's one of the things it can do. So it can also detect end credits. Um, it can detect the different shots. And I think this one is very nice. Uh, because um, it's not so easy to do if you have a long video and uh, and you want the timestamps for each individual shot. You know, you basically have to do this uh, manually. Uh, and here, you know, pretty pretty simple. Recognition is going to do that for you and give you timestamps for all the different shots. Uh, it can also detect uh, color bars, right? Uh, so again, um, calibration uh, uh, pictures like these that would be present in, uh, in professional videos. And, uh, and it just works as usual. You uh, submit uh, you, your uh, video from um, uh, an S3 bucket uh, with input parameters and then recognition will process it and it's going to output um, a, a JSON document um, with all the information that you requested. So this is, this is really nice. Um, haven't had time to test it yet, but I think for, uh, for video professionals, it's a, it's a very nice addition. Okay, let's continue with high-level services. And it's been a while since we talked about Amazon Lex, and uh, this feature is a good opportunity to do that. Amazon Lex is our chatbot service, and um, the Lex team has added an integration with Amazon Kendra. So we did talk about Kendra not so long ago. I actually did a demo for you. Uh, Kendra is a is a managed search service, and so it would make sense to 
integrate a search service with uh, a bot service. So this is exactly what the Lex team did. So um, if you need a, a refresher on <laughs> Kendra, uh, I wrote a blog post showing you how to create an index and um, and you know querying that index using um, on a collection of uh, Wikipedia documents that I uh, uploaded to S3 and index, etc. So again, I reference the blog post. And, uh, and once you have that Kendra index, uh, you can just go and ask questions. So let's give it a try here. Uh, and I'm going to reuse the same example from my blog post. All right, who's Thad Jones? And Thad Jones is a jazz trumpeteer. Okay, so again, this is Kendra. Now let's see how we can, uh, how we can integrate it with Lex. So it's actually very, very easy. I, uh, I just built this uh, I, um, uh, very, team, very silly demo bot in, in seconds, honestly. So I just created a new bot. Uh, I added a, um, a placeholder intent because we need to have one. And then I added a Kendra intent. And this Kendra intent is actually using the Amazon Kendra search intent, which, which is one of the built-in intents. So you just create the intent, select that built-in value, and that's about it. And then you point it at the Kendra index you want to query, which is the one I showed you uh, from, uh, from the blog post. Um, and you fill in some, uh, some example uh, answers here, right? So, you know, one would be enough, but uh, uh, for uh, better interaction, it's, uh, you know, you want a little more variety. So, Okay, we have three different uh, answers here, and uh, you can see they actually extract uh, information from the uh, from the Kendra um, response, right? So you can just use that directly. I just copy it and paste it from the from the documentation, um, which I'll show you in a second. And then I um, built uh, that chatbot, which took just a few seconds, and now we can test it. Okay. So uh, we can ask a question here. Who's that Jones? Okay, so that query goes uh, directly to my Kendra index. And I think the answer to your question is that Jones <laughs> uh, is a jazz trumpeteer, etc., etc., etc. Right? So that's pretty cool. So we can ask, uh, you know, we can try, um, you know, let's try another one. Uh, with whom did that Jones play? And yeah, we get a good answer. Um, that Jones continued his career uh, playing with Count Basie, etc., etc. So the the context is pretty good. Uh, Mel Lewis, etc., etc. So uh, yeah, it's not just matching keywords. It's it's looking for context. And, uh, you know, and as I explained before, when I'm saying with whom did Thad Jones play, uh, I'm not looking for, you know, uh, is, uh, is uh, football buddies or, uh, or basketball buddies or whatever, right? Um, Thad Jones is a musician, so he's, he played with other musicians. So it's important to get that context. And Kendra does that. And, uh, and actually, I think this is a very nice integration. It's, uh, it's super simple. I, I really uh, only had to create the intent uh, fill in some um, uh, sample responses and point it at the index, and it worked on the first try, which I always I always enjoy, right? So uh, you can find uh, a little bit more details in the Lex documentation, and uh, but there isn't much more <laughs> than uh, what I just told you, right? So very cool, very cool way. Okay, uh, let's move on. The next one is personalize ah, well, a service that I really really like as well so personalize is a managed personalization and recommendation service uh, we've discussed it many times and um, and the team added recommendations filter uh, so this is great because one of the main problem with recommendation is you don't want a recommendation model to recommend stuff that you already bought or you know already viewed 
if it's a movie, etc. Right? It's it's a really annoying thing, and uh, sometimes we th see that with ads. You keep seeing the product that you bought a week ago, or maybe it's a gift, and you know someone else using the computer sees it and you know, kind of ruins the uh, the surprise. So that's that's terrible. And so um, with personalized now, uh, you can still create your personalization model exactly as before. So you can upload uh, your CSV file with your user item interactions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, Let's take an example here. If we have a data set that looks uh, like this, okay? Uh, so user IDs, item IDs, and even types uh, telling us, okay, this is a click, this is a purchase, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, uh, and then you know, timestamp, etc. So uh, we know now that uh, uh, user one did buy item one, three, six, uh, and uh, and they saw item. Uh, 47. So it wouldn't make sense to recommend items 136 again. Um, if it's, you know, if it's a, a washing machine or if it's, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you probably don't need to buy one again right away. Um, if it's a pizza, well then, yeah, it's good information. And if you, if the model figures out, I love pepperoni pizza, then sure. Uh, if I buy one once a week, then yeah, you should probably recommend it to me. But in some use cases, you know, you want to filter those out. So using the uh, event type, you can just create a filter with this super simple syntax saying, well, just exclude items uh, where the event type is purchase, right? Um, or exclude items where event type is, you know, movie viewed, for example. Okay, no, I don't want to see that movie again. Uh, or at least not right now. So creating a filter is super easy. You can do this in the console and uh, just type your uh, your expression, right? Very, very simply uh, to do. And then of course you can uh, apply a filter to your recommendation uh, campaign, right? So again, you can do this very easily in the console and you can do the same with the APIs. And so now um, recommendations will still be uh, available as usual, but they will be uh, filtered by this recommendation filter. And uh, this is one of the top asks that I've uh, gotten from uh, from personalized customers. So I'm very, very happy to, to see this released. And they made it very, very easy to use as well. So go and try it. Okay, uh, we have one more to go, and this is the crazy one. Um, and this time we're moving to SageMaker. So uh, I think I've told you before about SageMaker Ground Truth, uh, which is the labeling, the data labeling service for SageMaker. And, um, and you can distribute um, data sets to uh, different types of workforces so that people work on annotating your data samples, whether they're you know, text samples, image samples, or something else and you get results back in S3, and you can use those annotated samples to train uh, machine learning models, right? Um, so, so far, Ground Truth supported um, uh, text for uh, maybe entity extraction, sentiment analysis, etc. Uh, images for uh, object detection, uh, segmentation, and, uh, and image classification. And now you can annotate 3D point clouds data sets. So those are really weird beasts. And, uh, and I wrote the, the blog post for this. Again, I'll have the, the URL in the description. And what those data sets are is really um, a 3D cloud um, of points, of data points captured by um, uh, vehicles um, in order to train autonomous uh, driving models. So um, these um, data points come from uh, cameras, right? And they uh, also comes from LiDAR sensors. So LiDARs are basically sensors that are placed at uh, different locations in the car, and they, they try to map the 3D world around the car. So it's not just 2D, it's 3D. So now the data set is pretty complicated. It has a pretty complex format, um, but uh, we give you some examples on how to process that for uh, for annotation, uh, we have some sample notebooks out there. And then uh, basically you can um, distribute those uh, those 3D frames, or as they're called, 
to your labeling workforce. And well, I can go on for a while because I think it's a fascinating example. Uh, so please read the blog post. And uh, I actually have a couple of videos uh, as well on my YouTube channel. So maybe let's just look at the first one. Uh, and there is no sound because I was focusing so much on doing it right. <laughs> so here you see I'm, I'm zooming in on, uh, on uh, a certain uh, part of that 3D space. And we can kind of see, um, you know, those two cars here. So I'm applying a 3D box on one of the cars. And we can see the different views here. So that's the top view, the side view, the front view. And we can see my box is way too high, right? Um, those red dots are the... Um, the LiDAR dots for the image and by uh, applying uh, a simple keyboard shortcut I can actually um, I can actually fit uh, the box automatically to uh, to the ground as you can see here that red line is the ground so I didn't do anything uh, except you know use that um, uh, keyboard shortcut and this is uh, one of the features that are part of uh, assistive labeling which are just a bunch of of clever um, machine learning based techniques to help you annotate those complex data sets. Because doing this, you know, pixel by pixel manually would probably drive you crazy. So here, just put the box, you know, close enough. Uh, it needs to be on the car uh, in at least one of the axes. And then uh, you can just use that shortcut to say, okay, fit it to ground. And then you saw that box automatically, um, you know, uh, go down and fit. Uh, the uh, fit the uh, the car and you can see here there's still some extra space right so let's play the video some more and now uh, you can see the box will automatically fit there you go will automatically fit to the car and this is another assistive labeling feature right and I can do the same for that other car so once again drop a 3d box uh, we can see again it's way too high right so um, I'm going to fit it to ground once again right there it goes okay bam and we can see some extra space here and again i'm going to fit that box to the car okay and these are just shortcuts and the service takes care of everything else um, so i don't want to take too long here you can watch the other videos where i actually show object tracking uh, so basically following a car across different frames again this is very very easy to do and um, and I think this is a fascinating uh, this is a fascinating tool, uh, and uh, it's good fun. I mean, even if you don't uh, even if you don't work on autonomous driving uh, tools, I think it's good to run maybe the demo and and see for yourself uh, the kind of stuff that uh, Ground Truth makes possible. And I think it's again it's really great. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you learned a few things. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I hope I'll see you on the road at some point when the world goes back to normal. Until then, keep rocking.